He is an Emmy nominated actor who lost his home, his career and his kids overnight because of divorce. And that's why he's written a book with hopes of telling his truth and helping others. Please welcome to the show, Greg Ellis. Welcome, Greg. Thank you for being here. Hey, Greg. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be on. Absolutely. Now, before we get into the night, your life was literally turned upside down. Tell us what your life was like before that evening. Paint us a picture. 20 years married, happily uh, living the American dream. Uh, beautiful home, member of the country club, kids in an exclusive elite private school. And um, I was flying around the world on location filming and um, had a great career. So life was pretty wonderful. Wow, pretty sunny. So Greg, you've said that a 10 word lie ruined your life. What was the lie and what happened after it was said? Well, yeah, it was March 5th, 2015. And uh, in the span of eight hours uh, on that day, I was ushered from my home in handcuffs at the behest I later discovered of my ex-wife, <sighs> imprisoned the first of five incarcerations, subjected to a temporary restraining order, became homeless, almost destitute overnight and watched helplessly as my professional reputation was irretrievably destroyed. And my sons lost their loving present father for half their childhoods. Wow. And in crossing that legal Rubicon from citizen to respondent, which is the name given to the defendant in a family law or divorce court proceeding, um, I migrated from a world of presumed innocence, uh, earned privilege and respected privacy to one of assumed guilt an immediate and ruthless judgment. And when I discovered that family law is the only branch of our legal system where there's no presumption of innocence, that mm -hmm. means that murderers, rapists, terrorists, pedophiles, all get more legal rights than law abiding citizens. Um, I started to wonder why we have this meaning crisis, why we have this dad deprivation crisis, why America is the uh, world leader in children growing up in single parent households. And um, to Debbie's point, you know, um, you know, I, I believe the gravest indicator at the root of America's torn familial tapestry is marriage and family breakdown. Socials and public policy stem from the health and well-being of relationships and uh, family formation. Um, and we have to be asking that question. Why is there such a meaning crisis? Why are there so many shooters who come from dad deprived homes? Mm -hmm. And why are we not speaking about the causality and correlation with young males, gun violence and our dad deprivation crisis? This is a national health emergency, maybe even global. So that nobody's talking about and family law is it, it is really at the core of this. And we must do a better job protecting the most vulnerable among us. So, Greg, what were the 10 words that put you into this tailspin? Yeah, there was a call that went uh, to the to law enforcement um, from my ex-wife and um, she asked them to come to the house and said that I was confused. Uh, they said, we can't come to the house if he's confused. And she said, what do you need to hear? And they said, we need to hear he's a threat to himself or the children. And the 10 words were, I'm sick of this S word. I'm going to harm the children. And those 10 words... Basically ruined my life and um, uh, welcome to family law. Wow. Wow. All right. You haven't seen your sons in a couple years now, Greg. If you you have the floor, you have this platform. What do you want them to know? Well, yeah. Oh, that's a. I know. That's a big It's painful question. to talk about. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. Well, I am. Um, gosh, I. I I, I just refer to the book, really. I write my one of my final chapters in the book is called The Funeral for My Sons. And in order to to live through the living grief, as I talk about it, I, I talk with parents through my uh, charity foundation, uh, CPU Children and Parents United, about the, the suicide by living grief, the lack of finality and closure. Um, I didn't want to write my book. I had to. That, that, fa that, fa one of the, that final chapter was really... It was a, a ritual funeral ceremony that mm -hmm. I had to enact myself to, to lay to rest the living grief of being suddenly and shockingly and catastrophically separated from my two boys who were the, the meaning, the meaning of yeah. my life. And, um, and I, you know, I, I wrote the book to make sense as well of the government sponsored devastation of my life and destruction of my family. Uh, it was part of my sense making therapy and recovery. Um, I wrote it to ring the alarm bell about a broken system 
and call for social change and family law reform, because this is happening and has been happening for decades to tens of thousands of parents and children across America. But more than anything, I wrote it to let my children know that I haven't and hadn't and never would abandon them. And my door is wide open. I love them so much. Mm. They were my everything. Wow. Mm. They were now my everything. Wow. So now I dedicate my time and my mission to helping other children and parents navigate this horrifically unfair divorce system wow. that we have in America wow. and call for social change and, and bring about policies and educate people. I just want to give a quick uh, shout out mm. to Representative Creech and his colleagues in Ohio who are pushing through the Equal Shared Parenting Bill. It's going to save thousands of children and parents' That's lives, amazing. literally. That's and amazing. I don't say that lightly. Thank you so and much. So there's many great local heroes across America doing great work. Thank you for that. To our DBL Nation visit Greg's website, therespondent.com. You can also purchase his book or soon to be released audiobook. You can also learn about his nonprofit aimed at helping families through divorce. Greg, thank you again for courage. being here thank and you. for your courage. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Be Absolutely. well. You too.